I'm going to continue with explaining to you what the person.java is. So the person.java, again, we in the last video I talked about the constructors. We had a three argument constructor and we had a default constructor. What I've created here is I've created three getters. The getters are going to be instance methods that are going to return the value of the variable. So public int get age. So we would have our, like say, person Bob. Bob.getAge would send back to me how old Bob is. Bob.getName would send back Bob to me. Bob.getWeight would send back Bob's weight. So those are my getters. And then what I'm going to have after that is a two string method. Again, it's an instance method. There's no static in there. It's a return method. It's sending a string back. And what it's going to do is it's going to send back the information about the person when I call system.out.println on the name of the object. So initially I'm going to create a string called ants. Um, and what's going to happen is it's going to print out their name their age, their weight, and then it's going to do an if check to, to see if they're alive. If they're alive, it's going to say they're alive. If, they're, if, the, if the value of the Boolean is true, that means they're alive. If the value of the Boolean is false, that means that they're deceased. So that's our two string method. Now, uh, additionally, there's going to be some other files that you're going to use. This read info method is pretty much going to be like your getter. It's going to be, it's one of, it's, it's, it's one, I'm sorry, your mutator. It's going to be how we get information. So what happens is it's an instance method. What happens is it's an instance method that I can call in an object. So I will do bob.readinfo. So when I create a person object and I want to get information from the keyboard, I say the name of the object, so bob.readinfo. It turns on the scanner. It prints the question on the screen saying, hey, enter the person's name. It's going to read that into the variable name. Enter the person's age. It's going to read that into the variable age. Enter the person's weight. It's going to read that in as a double into the person's weight. And it's going to set their, their status of alive to true. So what it's going to mean is that they are living. So that's how we get the information. So I'll show you that as we kind of get to the next step. Uh, the next thing we have here is we have a method for making a baby, basically, born. So here's what ends up happening. If I have a born method, a baby is born, and what ends up happening is that baby's name has yet to be determined. That parents haven't named it yet. Its age is zero because it was just born. What this is going to do is this is going to go ahead and generate a random number. This math random times nine is going to give me a random integer from 0 to 8.9999. What's going to happen on that 0 to 8.99 plus 6 is going to give me a random weight from 6 to like 14.999. So just a, a little short of 15 pounds. Uh, and then we have a die method. These are kind of mutator methods. The die method is basically going to do the following is as soon as we dot die someone, it's going to cut their weight in half and it's going to change their alive status from true to false. So those are our mutator methods.